Okay guys, so I did some quick fooling around with uh, purlin noise here. Um, so in GLM you can do two vec a vector 2, vector 3, vector 4 as an input into the purlin noise function. It gives you a float between 0 and 1. So I take that and I make it based on this, you know, this loop here. So the i divided by 15, j divided by 15 is the input. So the p noise times 2, and then if that number falls below, like whatever that is there, then it changes it to a nice kind of blue. And if, if not, it's the regular Veroni. So kind of gives you, uh, where's it at, where's it at? Let's find a good one without any blue in it, I guess we could try. Let's go over here, because it's got some reds and oranges and stuff. Let's go over there. So you can kind of see now how we've got a nice little terrain going. And it's got the land and the water and everything. Let's get a bit closer here. Let's find a good screenshot position. Is that good? So it kind of gives you a sense. Um, and it'd be, it'd be easier, you know, as you're walking across here and all this stuff or whatever. I don't know. Not sure what we're going to do with this, or, uh, but it, that's definitely a good, good place to start. So. Um, that's it. All I did was apply that Perlin noise to the Y coordinate. Sorry if I didn't mention that, but I've been playing around with this. And then that's it. So the X and Z axis goes out. The grid is normal there, but then the P noise times that. And I can also increase the, the height of it, or whatever here, P noise times 4. And I can just multiply that whole number up there by 4, but whatever, just do it right there. Um, let's go over here and look at this one. There we go. So it gets a little bit more dips and valleys and stuff, you know. That's kind of really cool looking now. So We're flying around. Okay. All right. Did you like those sound effects? Okay, that was good. <laughs> All right. Thanks again for watching.